Spirit. I greet all of you on this very holy American holiday, Memorial Day, where we all in this country pray for the repose of the souls of all those who have sacrificed their lives for the liberty and the freedom of us who live in this country. More will be said on this at the picnic. Um, I would like to say how this started. It started after the Civil War, and the Confederate women came to decorate the graves of all of the fallen soldiers. And it was called Decoration Day, where they decorated graves of flowers. Both the Confederate and the Union soldiers who sacrificed their lives in that Civil War. But today I'd like to um, I'd like to talk about the gospel we heard yesterday about the blind man. Why is there so much suffering in the world? How do we deal with suffering as Christians? Is there a way to trans transform suffering into something positive? To find good out of any evil? or unfortunate circumstance? How are we as a Serbian people to understand the demolition of the cataclysmic floods which have befallen the Serbian people and torn across Serbia, Bosna Herzegovina, the Republika Srpska, and claimed so many lives, devastated cities, and torn down villages? The gospel we heard yesterday, the liturgy, about the blind man answers our question because Jesus Christ answers that question. And he answers every question that we have concerning our life and concerning our eternal life. His apostles saw a blind beggar, and this was in yesterday's gospel of St. John. Uh, the ninth chapter. A man who had been blind from birth. And they wanted to know why is this man blind? Why has he been blind for 38 years? Was it because something his parents did? Was it something that he did? Why is a child born blind? Or with some deformity? Or with some unfortunate circumstance. In a response to their question, Jesus surprised them by saying, He was born blind so that God's work may be revealed through Him. Jesus does not answer the question about why someone suffers. Instead, He places suffering in a new perspective. He says that suffering can be used for something good. In our times of despair, we have great opportunities to glorify God. Christ gave us the greatest example of this by tra transforming His own suffering and His own death into a victory. He used something negative, the cross, and came out with a positive result of resurrection because we're still right now in the resurrection period until Thursday, the Feast of the Ascension. Christ set the pattern for the saints throughout history. Even though the martyrs endured much suffering and pain, they tolerated difficulties bringing their earthly lives and transform them into opportunities to glorify God. We Serbian people absolutely can identify with this gospel and with this miracle. For example, the epistle, epistle that was read yesterday, we see how St. Paul and St. Silas were beaten by rods they had their feet chained, and they were thrown into prison. What did they do? How did they react? Teaches us how to react to disaster. How did they respond to their 
predictable predicament. And how are we as a people responding to this predicament that we're in today? They begin praying and singing hymns to God so that the whole prison could hear them. As they sing and praise God, what happens? A miracle happens. A miracle occurs. The doors of the prison are open. What do Paul and Silas do? They don't use this opportunity to run away. They don't use this opportunity to escape. Instead, they use it as an opportunity to preach the gospel and tell others about salvation in Christ. As a result, the prison guard himself comes to believe in Christ. He invited Paul and Silas to his home, and the entire family became baptized, and they went in their Christian mission, following, following Paul and Silas. Here, Paul and Silas turned their affliction into an opportunity to glorify God. Their suffering is transformed into a victory. This is our lesson. This is the lesson that comes from this Gospel of St. John in the ninth chapter. Good can come out of bad. Suffering, pain, and sorrow become opportunities for the sufferer to radiate the power and the peace of God. It's easy to say we believe in God and praise Him when everything is fine and dandy. But when we suffer and face unexpected problems, like our people have in Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, how much more difficult it is to be a Christian. And yet this is exactly when our witness has been the greatest. And this is when our witness as an Orthodox Christian Serbian community has to be at its peak to the world so that the light, let Christ's light shine forth from our people and let it shine in the whole world. How often are we inspired by examples of people who suffer and yet overcome their suffering with a positive attitude? There's two writings in the scripture that are very important for us regarding this. The reason I'm giving this sermon today from yesterday is because it implies to us right now in this situation that the Serbian people find them in, in this disaster which has occurred. St. James writes in the Bible, we should read this Bible. Bible reading should be um, a regular thing in the life of every Orthodox Christian. Count it all joy when you meet various difficulties. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Whose faith has been tested more than our faith as Orthodox Christian service? Whose? Let the steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. This is from St. James. Here's one more from the Apostle Paul. We rejoice in our suffering because suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the light of the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is Romans. Five, three to five. Are we mature Christians as Serbs and Orthodox? This is a test of our maturity. A mature Christian is someone who can take even the worst experiences of life and turn them into experiences which help them grow, help them become better people. Help them show others that strength 
what kind of strength God gives to his believers. Let this be a moment for us to shine. Let us pray to God that our Serbian people show the world this side of their Orthodox Christian soul. May your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. So let God now at this time in history be glorified to the Serbian people and the soul of the Serbian people. We will never be able to fully understand why certain unfortunate things happen. Christ shows us, though, how to take the unexpected, how to take the unfortunate, and transform them into something new. A sense of peace and hope are never far away for the one who truly believes in Jesus Christ. Amen.